Welcome to Tom Talks. Join me once a week right here on Tom Bully YouTube channel. We're gonna break down all the latest and greatest walleye fishing tips, walleye fishing tricks, the absolute location where these fish are right now, and all the practical, relevant information you want and need. Hooked off. And look at that, just gone. For all the information you want and need, stay tuned right here, once a week, Tom Talks. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. We are back home finally. We are back home from North Dakota. I was out there for a few days. Fishing rarely disappoints when I'm on Devil's Lake. I've only spent a few days there um, in my short amount of time of fishing North Dakota and just an incredible fishery. I don't know if I've ever been to a place um, so dense in walleyes where it just seems like, man, there's just a ton of fish in that system. Absolutely unbelievable. Spent actually a few days out there, was going to spend another day out there, and of course the wind picked up unpredicted to like 30 miles an hour, and it was just going to be one of those deals where would have really struggled to get out and really fish anywhere. And there's nothing that drives me crazier than um, being a, not being able to go everywhere you want and fish clean and things like that. So came home a day early, um, but I don't think there was really a ton of different stuff left to do there. I mean, we went out, we got an awesome pitching bite the second day, and that's kind of what I want this Tom Talks to be about, kind of breaking down new water and things of that nature. And uh, we got a bunch of comments about uh, why we quit doing Tom Talks. Well, I feel like they're just kind of getting repetitive, even though they're not really getting repetitive, because every time I feel like we talk about something different, and um, you know, information's always good. And I almost miss the days where like this channel was like a little bit more nitty gritty, where it was like uh, almost it almost felt like more of like a fishing report thread for a while like in the early days of this channel it's kind of evolved into i feel like some videos that are kind of that you know nitty-gritty type fishing stuff scrounging up some fish and there's other videos where i feel like i spend a lot more time editing them and kicking out but i do absolutely love kind of like the uh the idea of just being like a few people are watching and it's like uh finally discussed details i guess of what i'm doing or maybe you know whatever and i'm by no means you know the the expert extraordinaire knowing everything but um this channel is white you know mostly based obviously off my experience and what i'm doing on the water and things like that and uh like i said we got a bunch of questions asked to do a tom talks and uh good time i always kind of like doing them when i come back from like a big trip like this um, especially it's when it's to a body of water where I don't know very much about and I certainly do not know a whole lot about fishing Devil's Lake in North Dakota and uh, but what I do know a lot about is fishing new bodies of water and kind of the process that I go through every time I do something like this and uh, a lot of times that process is pretty similar you know and we'll kind of key a lot of this stuff into um, you know the, the time frame right now in this kind of late summer time frame and uh, hopefully a fall transition happens soon because I'm kind of ready for some bites to change up in my area but um you know, generally in this late summer period, whenever you get to a body of water, um, the first thing I start doing is like looking for depths or kind of have, trying to have a preconceived notion of a depth where these fish are going to be relating to. And, and summer is a lot of times very depth oriented. And what I mean by that is the depth in which those fish are at or the bulk of these fish will be at will change a lot, whether you're in a lake um that's very stained that has a basin of 15 feet versus fishing a very clear body of water that has a basin of 80 feet versus fishing a let's say river system that has some chalkier water or something like that so the, <clears throat> the depths on these fish are relating to will change a lot based on the kind of body of water you're fishing but a lot of times this late summer time frame what you might see is um a lot of fish in that particular lake might be relating to 15 feet of water right and a, a lot of fish in a really deep natural lake might be relating to 27 feet of water and fish in a river system might be relating to you know 22 feet or whatever it is and a lot of times a lot of that is dictated by uh, water clarity for me and that overall depth of that body of water and uh, i would say a lot of times water clarity kind of trumps a lot of that stuff and uh, what i mean by that is a lot of your very clear systems that i fish a ton locally uh, where i live you know, a lot of times those basins are 30 feet plus. So they're generally pretty deep lakes. They're very, generally very clear. And when you can see straight to the bottom in like eight feet of water, very rarely do walleyes like use that type of stuff um, outside of like very early in the spring and very late in the fall a lot of times. But in uh, a lot of these very clear systems, like I said, you know, they generally fish deeper. So a lot of times, what, like I said, what you might see is where these, these pieces of structure fall out to basin and where like you start getting to, let's just say 28 feet for this example, you'll start seeing a lot of life like at 28 feet, kind of all around the lake. Now you might be looking at a point first and then a hump and then a deep saddle. And what you might be seeing is on all three of those pieces of structure, what the fish are actually relating to is a depth line. And that's like 20 28 feet, like I said. Now, 
Devils is a lake where the water is a little bit kind of chalky. It's a little bit dirtier than like a clear system. And because of that, a lot of those fish sit, sit quite a bit shallower. And Devil's Lake always seems to fish shallow for me. Um, the couple times I've been there and uh, like I said that water is a little bit dirtier the basin in the lake is like anywhere from you know most places it seems like 30 33 feet the water is kind of way down there this year that's what I'm assuming it's way down there this year um, I've never been there outside of this year but my hummingbird offset was like eight feet um, eight feet low and that's a great feature you guys can use if you're fishing like a body water that fluctuates a lot whether that's a reservoir um, or just a lot of lakes this year because we've had so little rain or a river system that's low um, is use that hummingbird offset and you know drop it down if you're sitting on the top of a hump that says it's 18 feet deep and you're sitting in 10 feet drop that thing back eight feet and uh, you know you're gonna have a much better idea of what structure actually looks like but like I said devils generally fishes a lot shallower for me and um, back in June we were catching a lot of fish and let's say like three to seven feet of water and then we we're getting really big fish in like uh 10 to 15 feet of water and generally what happens pretty much no matter where you're going to go throughout the season is a lot of times fish generally have this natural migration deeper to the middle of summer and then generally it starts getting cold again and lakes that have a thermocline might turn over into the fall and then a lot of times fish will come back shallow and uh you know so generally i was assuming that a lot of these fish were going to be out in that 15 to 20 foot of water and uh, there was definitely fish in that depth zone, but I was still finding basically what it seemed like there was just a lot, uh, most of the masses of numbers of fish ended up in that 10 to 15 foot range. And that kind of seemed pretty common just driving around the lake. It was, and there's so many fish, you know, it's easy in a lake like Devil's Lake where there's so many fish where you hit a couple of spots and immediately you see all those fish and you're like, okay, there's a lot of fish in 12 feet of water. So once you kind of figure out the depth range that a lot of these fish are using, that makes it pretty easy because then you can kind of set your highlight your hummingbird highlight to that depth zone a lot of times so like i said if you're seeing a lot of fish in 12 to 15 feet of water set your green band to 12 to 15 feet of water and then just look at every piece of structure in the lake and i have a very simplistic way to go about picking out spots a lot of people i feel like they um they'll set that highlight or they'll be looking at a map and they'll say oh look at that tiny little rock hump that's out in the middle of the lake what a great spot that has to be well i'm sure it definitely could be at a certain time of year but the simplest easiest way to go about finding fish on new body water once you find that depth zone go to the largest biggest spot on the lake look at your green if you set that mid-depth highlight in your hummingbird go to the absolutely biggest spot in the lake it might be a huge point that comes out where it's three five eight and then it gets really flat 10 to 15 feet and then slowly tapers out go look at those spots those big spots have so much carrying capacity that a lot of times they're always going to be your safest bet as far as uh finding fish quickly goes you know it, it, and we all want to i feel like all fishermen in general want to believe there's just this top secret little tiny spot hidden somewhere and there probably is and there's probably some fish that relate to it but you know going to those three or five or one depending on how big your lake is biggest spots in the lake and looking at them once you find the depth that fish are relating to always the safest way to go about it now the second thing that you normally find is on top of the depth zone and on top of you know finding spots that have fish on it there's generally a structural element mixed in there um, it might be, it might be weeds, it might be rocks, it might be wood, it might be whatever, you know, it might be old road beds on devil, you know, whatever it is. Um, generally there's a structural element mixed in there, or sometimes fish are re relating to multiple piece, you know, types of structure. And, um, you know, devils is absolutely loaded with wood and that wood is kind of the only, uh, there's definitely some rocks out there and there's definitely weeds out there, but as far as a lot of structure, or a lot of uh, fish hole and cover and structure in that 12 to 15 feet, a lot of wood, a lot of wood in that lakes, um, timber or trees that are still sticking out of the water. And the fish definitely like to relate to that. And when you start fishing a lot of structure, whether that's weeds or rocks or wood, fish kind of relate to it all similarly. A lot of times there's sweet spots and whether you're looking at rocks or weeds, those sweet spots might look different. Um, but a lot of times fish are like holding on edges. Edges are big. So whether that's edge of a a real thick timber line or a real thick weed edge or a real thick rock that transitions to sand a lot of times like i said once you find that depth zone you find kind of the spots that fish are holding then it might be cover oriented then you might be looking for spots that are rock or weeds or timber or you know whatever it is and uh kind of when you figure out those three things um you know which the more you fish a lot of this stuff will just come naturally it's just kind of this natural progression that you're going to go through every time you get in a boat you're going to say okay let's find where these fish are holding okay they're all in 18 feet of water today or they're all from 15 to 20 feet of water well then it makes it easy then you start looking at spots that are like that then you go to those spots and you look for cover and you look for fish and then a lot of times that's kind of how the whole thing comes together 
And, uh, you know, the catching fish is obviously always secondary to the finding fish. You know, the catching is, should be a lot of times the easier part than the actual finding of fish. But um, we all know how that goes. Now, the first day I was on Devil's Lake was a quick afternoon, and it was super windy, and uh, it was a big, giant east wind, and the high was 51. There's a bunch of YouTube comments that were like, this had to have been filmed some other time because you were wearing a sweatshirt and bibs and rain gear and all that kind of stuff. Well, it was just that cold out there that day, super cold. And uh, 51 degrees, water dropped, east wind. That was my first day there. And that is historically when you get a big front that comes in, and you get really like a big cold front and very bizarre wind. Everybody says, you know, fishing is generally bad in east wind. Well, generally when you're having an east wind, it's a post-frontal situation. So a lot of times, you know, if, if you happen to have an east wind on a prefrontal situation, a lot of times it's a good bite. So an east wind has no dictation of really a good bite or a bad bite. It's just generally an east wind is following a big front that came through. So you, any, you know, we always talk about fronts and, you know, the front's good or front's bad. Who knows? They're fish, right? Who really cares? You just go out there and you fish and whatever happens, happens. But, um, you know, a lot of times that lead edge of a front is good. And then generally what you see more is if that front blows out and then you have a very extreme polar opposite of what was before that, a lot of times you'll see worse fishing um, or much more unpredictable fishing. And a lot of times when you kind of have, you know, a front come through, let's say a blow, like we've all seen the summer storms that'll come through where super hot and humid, the bite might be good, good, good. And then that front goes through, boom, and then it gets hot and humid again. And a lot of times when it gets hot and humid again, after that front is a lot of times when fishing will be like, good again so um you know weather's weather who knows where were we going with this oh yeah but we were fishing the same the same spots right um and we we're just catching a lot of small fish and uh that is pretty normal a lot of times for like uh <clears throat> conditions like that just weird weather a lot of times you don't see as many big fish um you know you, you they're either fishing on top of them or big fish are much more affected by weather and weird conditions just as a whole and the more you fish you kind of get to realize that kind of stuff but anyways we just didn't catch it i didn't catch any big fish um or night or you know really nice like stocky 22s kind of what i'm calling like some of the better fish we were catching um that first day second day drove to a totally different end of the lake um fishing the same types of structure and side imaging is just an amazing tool and what you could do with side imaging is once you get used to looking at it enough you can tell kind of when you're in schools of small fish or bigger fish. So I drove around a lot of spots the second day and I was seeing a lot of those same like smaller fish schools, probably had some decent ones mixed in. Um, but a lot of times where this whole story is going is a lot of times there's a split bite and a split bite is a lot of times what I call something where you might have a numbers pattern, which is just like crazy numbers of fish somewhere and generally they're smaller. And then there might be something else where the larger fish are doing. And I went to a different base in a lake on the second day, drove around a lot of those timber spots, was seeing a lot of fish. And then I just happened to kind of look at a spot, which was a lot of fish here, a lot of fish here. And then this little saddling trough that kind of connected these two spots. And it was sand with just a little bit of wood on it. And for whatever reason, um, there was some larger fish holding on that, but kind of another, uh, and that's where we filmed that second video where I caught just, I was literally catching like walleyes, like every single cast for you know, I, I don't even know. It was like an hour. There was a ton of fish that I just didn't even put in the video because it would have gotten way too repetitive. But another good example of a split bite is like, um, you know, what goes on right now in a lot of our natural lakes. And that's where you might have a basin bite where we're trolling in 50 feet of water, 30 feet down, um, or we're fishing 30 foot rock or 30 foot um, hard to soft bottom transitions. And then what you might also see is like a 13 foot weed edge bite. So maybe those fish are the same size. Maybe the big ones are up shallow, the smaller ones are out deep. And that that varies a lot lake to lake. Um, a lot of your flowage systems, a lot of your, what, one thing I see a lot of your northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota flowage systems is you might be able to go out deep on a lot of these channel points, 15 to 20 feet of water and just catch endless walleyes and they're probably going to be small. And then if you go up very shallow into like, you know, five to eight feet of water and fish either wood or weeds in a lot of these flowage systems, they end up being the bigger fish. So that, that's kind of what I call a split bite where you might have two kind of separate things going on at the same time. And a lot of bodies of water will have something like that. So that's kind of the process I go through when I'm fishing a lot of new bodies of water. Generally, I try to find a depth that's holding fish. Generally, then I try to find a piece of the structure that are holding fish. And then I try to find, you know, some kind of cover that those fish are relating to. And a lot of, you know, on a lake that's really abundant with fish, a lot of times you put those three things together and then you go around and every single, every single spot that has those three characteristics going for it, a lot of times will have fish on it. If you're fishing a less dense lake, you might hit four of those spots to find one that has fish on it and then go do the same thing until you got 32 of those spots and eight that have fish on them. So that's kind of the deal a lot of times when I'm breaking down new bodies of water. Um, I do not like to overcomplicate stuff. And like I said, the more you fish, you just kind of get used to doing a lot of this stuff. But very rarely, do I would say, do you get to a new lake and you're like, 
oh, there's some in five, there's some in 12, there's some in um, you know, 22, there's some in 33 as well, especially in this midsummer time frame. The fish generally get very depth oriented this time of year. Now, when the water starts cooling again, all that stuff will flip flop and maybe we can make another one of these videos. But as far as fishing new bodies of water this time of year in this middle of summer time frame, um, a lot of times this is the process that it goes through. So hopefully this video, video was beneficial for you guys. Hopefully like you guys liked the content from um, uh, North Dakota, Devil's Lake. We'll be actually be going out there again in a couple weeks and I'm suiting up or gearing up, loading up the boat right now late at night uh, to make another trip to a big river system tomorrow. So hopefully we get some content there. If we don't get the content there, no, it was a total bust and this whole thing I just described to you guys did not work there. But um, yeah, wish us luck and I appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you guys are not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you guys next time.